This week, it's makeover time for my Jazz Master. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, as always, like and subscribe down below. So this week we're gonna look at some mods for my Warmoth Performer Jazzmaster. If you watch my channel, if you've seen the video before when I put this together, you'll kinda know some of the electronics and stuff that's in it already. Nothing too crazy. Really the only thing that is a change from a, a standard Jazzmaster is the uh, Strat style tremolo system. But yeah, this week we're gonna look to change up some of the electronics and also put on some cool little parts and pieces that I've found from Stumac. So setting the guitar aside, I've got my box of goodies here that I got from Stumac and Next Gen Guitars in Canada. Um, we'll just kind of go through each item and I'll tell you why I'm making that switch. So first off is some pots. These are 250K pots. I'm switching these out in my Jazzmaster right now. I have 500K pots. The main reason I'm doing this is to try to get a rid of a little bit of the brightness in the Jazzmaster. I know some purists would say that's what they're supposed to be, is 500K, it's supposed to have that really high end. For me, I'm thinking 250K might just deaden that a little bit and uh, put it more in a usable range for me. Additionally from Stumac, I got these guys here, which are the foam that goes under your Jazzmaster pickups. I've worn out my foam once already, um, just kind of compressed the, the pickups a little bit too much. These ones I thought were pretty cool for an extra dollar or two. They actually have little springs integrated inside them, so they'll get a little bit more bounce and hold, hopefully hold up a little bit longer. Um, really what I was using was just weather stripping, so this is probably more kind of in line with what you're supposed to be using, but kind of cool little thing that Stumac uh, sells and I thought it'd be interesting to put in. So really the main thing of this build is going to be around the switching. What I've purchased here is a four-way blade style switch to add the series connection for my two pickups. Uh, I don't have the upper control system in this Jazzmaster, so I thought adding this would give me an extra tone and uh, yeah, give me something else to play with. So this is definitely the main part of this upgrade. For the four-way switching, it's not gonna be anything too crazy. You can get diagrams from Seymour Duncan. They don't have anything specifically for a Jazzmaster, but if you wanna know how to do it, the Telecaster switching is the exact same. Uh, basically just printed off that four-way switch diagram here. I'll put it on the screen as well. And that's the wiring diagram I'm going to use for the Jazzmaster. So because I am changing out the switch to a blade style switch, I needed to change up the pick guard. Uh, that's why I purchased this guy. It is a parchment white pick guard. It's actually three ply. Uh, you can see it has the spot down here for the uh, four way, three way, five way switch um, for that Oak and Grigsby switch that I purchased. So uh, this is gonna be cool. Also changing up the pick guard to parchment from black is gonna be a little bit of a different look for the guitar. Other than that, I just have a few odds and ends here. Uh, one would be new pickup screws for my Jazzmaster pickups. I noticed the heads on a few of my uh, screws were getting a little bit burned up, and before they started to strip, I wanted to change them out. Also, uh, tone cap. I couldn't decide between a 22 nano and a 47 nano, so I actually went right in between and landed on a 33 nano. Switchcraft switch, and I do have some, uh, some pushback cloth wiring that I'll use to wire it up. Other than that, uh, I am going to try to maybe lower the nut on this. I'm not sure if I'll show it on the video, but just in case anything happens there, I did have a uh, Tusk XL nut just on hand, and then I'm going to throw on some new strings as well. These are just NY XLs, and these are actually the balance tension ones, uh, 9 to 40, which I like to use. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to head down to the shop, and uh, we'll put the pick guard together first, and then hopefully we'll just drop it in and uh, wire up the pickups, and it'll be an easy change. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, just cause I have this strip of aluminum shielding kind of left over from a previous project, I'm just gonna shield a little bit more of this, um, this backside of the pick guard. Probably not necessary, but uh, might just help ground out in some other places. So we'll just go ahead and do that. Okay, now we need to go on to potentiometers. These are both 250K log potentiometers. We'll spin these guys off. So next, just for those potentiometers, I'm gonna scalpel out the, the holes where they are gonna reside. And while I'm 
doing that, I might as well do the one for the audio in. It's, now is probably a good time also to take off the protective covering for this pick guard, so we'll go ahead and do that, I guess, as well. So we'll put this guy in here, just kind of finger tight. Same with the other guy. Double check. That's going to be perfect. All right. Put in our jack. Now we'll put in our switch. Okay, so we have everything seated in there, the switch, the jack, the uh, tone and volume pot. So now we need to start wiring this up. I think the easiest thing to start with is probably the switching. So we'll go with that first. I also made a little tone bleed or treble bleed circuit that I'm going to put in as well. So we'll uh, fire that one in. That goes on the tone or the volume pot. So we'll just throw that in there. And that is just made of a 150K resistor and a, a one nanofarad capacitor. And that's just makes it so when you turn your volume down, you don't lose a bunch of your treble.
Okay, so now we got to get pick guard off and uh, replace it. So let's uh, let's go ahead and do that. Get a Phillips head screwdriver and something to put the pick guard screws in. So I've just removed the nut here. And next step is to, uh, is to file it down a little bit. So what we need to do is uh, tape a little bit of this 150 grit sandpaper around the neck so I can get the, the curve of the fretboard. And I just wrap it around as tight as I can and then put a piece of tape there. All right. Now we're just gonna take our nut that we just removed and I'm not gonna take a lot off. In fact, what I'm gonna do is just take my pencil, put a little bit marking on it 
and uh, we'll just go a few times and make sure that that's gone. That's probably good. Wasn't too bad to begin with, but I just wanted to adjust it slightly and that's probably the easiest way to do it. Quick, that's how you would file a nut anyway. It's already done to the width. So we'll just set that right back in there. So the nut is done as well now. So just uh, going to condition the fretboard before I put the strings on. Uh, I don't think we need to save that on the camera. It's basically just taking a rag and cleaning up the frets. So uh, yeah, that's good for down here. So we're back from the bench. As you can see, I had to put some warmer clothes on just cause it's getting a little cold down there. But you can see now my finished or upgraded or changed or modified uh, Warmoth Performer Jazzmaster. So again, the main things you're gonna notice here is that four-way switch, as well as the change to the parchment uh, pick guard. I actually think when I first did this, I put on a parchment pick guard and then swapped it out for a black one. So you may not have seen that initial swap um, if you pay attention to the channel, but yeah, went back to parchment. Uh, definitely like the look of it with the, the Daphne blue. So quickly, just to go over every change that was made, obviously we lowered the, the nut height. That was the last thing in the videos from the bench. Um, we added the new foam underneath the, uh, the pickups, which I, I do really like. Um, you're still compressing them quite a bit, but uh, I do like that maybe they'll have a little bit more bounce back when I uh, bring them back up or if I have to bring them back up. Uh, Four-way switch, which was really cool. I think I'm really excited to use that and see what it's like. The pots were brought down from 500K to 250K. And obviously one thing that I forgot to mention in the intro was the uh, inclusion of that treble bleed circuit uh, on the volume pot. And that's just so I don't lose a bunch of treble when I turn down the volume. So I'm definitely gonna leave you with a sound sample of the pickups in each of the positions and maybe vary the tone knob a little bit to see how that 250K pot changes it. Um, but I do have to do a few setups on this uh, just since I changed the nut height, I'm gonna have to look at the intonation, the action. Uh, also, I haven't picked this up in maybe a month, so I should just check to see what the neck is like because uh, we've had some pretty crazy weather here in Atlantic Canada. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do this off camera and then I'll play you guys out with some test tunes. <laughs>
So hopefully you guys enjoyed the mods I did to my Jazzmaster. Obviously it's personal preference for me, but uh, I'm gonna try it out and give it a shot. That's all for this week. Remember to like, subscribe down below.